In this video we're going to remove the faulty components from this Pascam 44 Mark III mixer channel. For desoldering the tools I like to have handy are a sharpie, some solder, a cheap soldering pump and some good quality desoldering braid. Don't scrimp on this, I'll talk about that in a second. Then obviously you're going to need to have a soldering iron. You don't need to have a particularly expensive one but um, I do actually have a, a Weller WSD-80 second hand, but worthwhile investment for me. Also handy to have some needle nose pliers to help get this out. First thing I'll do is uh, mark the solder contacts on the other side of the board. So this one looks like it's got three pins going into the board and there's probably a couple of tabs there to hold it in place. So I'm pretty confident that's going to correspond to these places here. What I'll begin by doing is introducing a little bit of fresh solder onto all five of these points. Um, that'll help the old solder to melt. I'm using this Loctite solder. I believe it does have a bit of lead in it, but I find that makes it work better. And it's got rosin in it, so you don't need to add flux to the contact points before soldering. If you're finding the soldering isn't working well for whatever reason, then you could use a, a, a cheap flux pen. This costs like 99 pence or something off eBay and put a little bit on the contact points first, like so. Probably try and suck as much of the solder off as I can with this. Uh, with smaller points then I will use the soldering braid. And I'll probably use the soldering braid on these points as well, just to clear up the contact points a bit more efficiently than you can do just with a pump alone. I'm using MG Chemical Super Wick. I've tried using cheap desoldering braid and it just wasn't effective. Uh, this stuff's about seven quid a roll, but it's totally worth it. Press it up against the surface with the hot solder tip and any excess solder should flow into the copper braid. This is a little bit reluctant to come clear so I'm going to add some fresh solder and then repeat the process. Now I grab these tabs with my needle nose pliers and just give them a bit of a wiggle to make sure that they're clear of their surrounds. And that should just press through pull the component from the other side and that's come out. It's not a foolproof method but I'll often try and test um, the components as I go along. Um, this is just a cheap little gadget that I bought on eBay. I think it cost me like five or six pounds and so you can plug a component into it and press the button. It's got a limited database um, but it does recognize this resistor obviously so I can tell from the readout that this is a 1k resistor and because uh, I got that reading I can assume that actually this component works okay and that's not my problem. Here's a funny thing I've just removed the wrong component I've removed the middle level control for channel 3 instead of channel 2 so uh, that's an example of the idiot move you can make in the middle of a process like this no wonder that one worked fine I've done a lot of soldering and desoldering and general faffing about with the camera off there. And uh, to cut a long story short, I made a bit of a schoolboy error um, when I was doing the signal tracing section of this vlog. I assumed that because the fader is laid out at the bottom of the mixer strip, that that is the last component that the signal passes through. And it isn't. And even though I don't have the schematics for this model, I ought to know better than that because in every other task I'm, that I've worked on where I do have the schematics, the signal passes through the fader before it hits the EQ. So the fact that the signal kind of stopped around the EQ section didn't eliminate our fader. And sure enough, it was a dead fader that was causing the problem in channel 2. I have since removed the problem fader and soldered in another one here. You can actually establish whether there is a problem with your faders using a multimeter. So this little symbol here means continuity. And uh, with your fader all the way up, it should be the same thing as touching the two probes together and it makes this little beep sound. Now if you look at the contacts here, these one, two, three, four, five points here relate to 
one of the faders and you can see there's fader one, there's fader two, there's fader three, etc, etc. And you can see that one, two, three of the five are set into this silverish area which is just earth. Whereas this one at the top and this one at the bottom have tracks coming away from them. So that's like the input and the output of the fader. So with the fader up, then I should get a signal coming through there. Like so. Whereas if I press this to the corresponding contacts of this fader that I've removed, I'll make sure that's turned up. Nothing. So this is just a dead component. I'm fortunate to have a spare board that I could lift this out of. The part number here is 303K slash 5KA. It's probably made by Alps. I would imagine that you could get a spare from an electrical wholesaler, um, but if not, then it's probably a very similar fader on other Porta Studios of around the same generation. So the 414 Mark II. Now, for one thing, I need to go back to my previous video and leave a caveat in the description and a comment so people can realise that my signal tracing in that video was a little bit funky. And the other thing is to partially reassemble this and establish that channel 2 is now working okay. So I've tested the mixer again, it works fine now. This is how I did it, just a Behringer cable tester into the socket 2 and monitoring using headphones. I'm only plugging this in via power and then it's, the power supply is plugged in there. So that's enough to establish that that fader's passing signal and these are all sounding clean. I also took all the knobs that were on there and um, along with uh, knobs for uh, Tascam 244 that I've been cleaning. Got some lukewarm water with a little bit of washing up liquid and gave them all a bit of a clean. They've been left to dry. Sped up the drying process by using a hair dryer on a low heat on them as well. When we come back I'll have remounted the mixer into the upper part of the case. And the next thing we'll do is there are little variable resistors on this board and that allows me to calibrate the level that the cord amplifier is sending to the tape and sending back from the tape so I'll use a test tape and oscilloscope to get those levels sitting nicely.